Well, what a pleasure really to come down to Lily's today. Uh, or what, no, what a pleasure to meet Lily today, even more, more so. I mean, first of all, some of the, the, the peas and those beautiful turnips I tasted today it was absolutely inspirational because, you know, I am a cook, but really without the gardener or without the farm, you know, I am nothing. So, you know, I mean, to come to Top Jordan and see such beautiful home produced food, you know, it's really heartwarming. village has a centralised district heating system of a kind which is fairly new to Ireland, uh, but very common in Europe, in mainland Europe, central, central and northern Europe. But from once the fuel is put into these loading bays, it goes directly automatically into the boiler, the boiler lights itself, the boiler uh, cleans itself, the boiler cleans out its own ash. Basically it's completely self control So you, wouldn't, you don't really need to look at it for days. So the fuel is mostly spruce all Irish grown uh, and it's basically just the waste wood left over the sawmill chopped up roughly you can see you can see the sort of size of it it's around about uh, a couple of centimetres three or four centimetres uh, in size most of it the occasional bigger bit the occasional smaller bit each house has a heat storage tank inside it which holds 800 litres of hot water that really takes the place of your boiler it works like your boiler when you want heat you take heat out of that tank rather than taking heat from the boiler when you don't want heat you switch it off Workshops, there's um, a number of things for kids, such as the children's um, art competition, and oh, we, we ran a kids' table quiz this year, which was quite successful and lots of fun. And Classic Clock Jordan is, is probably the big event of it, um, which is the Clock Jordan Community Choir. And there were 40 students. Uh, summer School of Traditional Music, uh, huge success, and there were lots of, um, there were sessions every night as well during the festival. They were all local people doing the presentations. We did nearly 70 events this year. So village, VERB stands for Village Education Research and Training, and it's just a place in, the, in sustainable projects where it, it holds and coordinates any activity around learning, training, education. People who may be thinking about moving here, uh, locating a business here, investing here, um, or just interested, seen an article about it, interested in seeing what it's all about, uh, sign up uh, with sales for an experience day, and they're held twice a month. Well, it's been a wonderful day. It's been, we were very, very impressed with what's happening here. Uh, we see great enthusiasm and commitment. We have learned a lot. Uh, the presentations by Duncan was very, very substantial. Uh, we were looked after by very uh, courteous guides. Uh, we enjoyed the Eco Village. We learned a lot about architecture. We enjoyed our visit to the Eco Farm as well. So a memorable day and thank you very, very much. So there's experience days, which just if you're interested, learning days if you want to go a little deeper. So we've had students here from Italy, from the, the, the University of Gastronomy that's connected to Slow Food in Bra near, near Turin. And so they came for three days where their focus is really on horticulture, food, the food economy, and resilience to certain extent. The role of education uh, and learning as a, a tractor or makes Clock Jordan a destination can support a local economy here. So if there's a number of uh, people coming here for say the nine day permaculture course, a great example, 26 students and five lecturers coming here for nine days to Clock Jordan. Every
every person that can offer B and B. Ultimately, when the hostel is complete, the hostel can accommodate people like that. The coffee shop is going to have a lot more sales, and the bookshop a lot more sales potentially over that nine days. And the the shops here, the pubs here, they'll contribute to not just the community life, but to the local economy. I sold my house in Dublin uh, about three years ago with the intention of setting up a rural life for myself. I always liked the countryside, I always wanted to live in the countryside. Uh, so I uh, chucked in my job and I bought myself a camper and I travelled all around Ireland looking for what I consider to be the ideal location. I had a checklist of approximately 10 items that I wanted to uh, tick off. I wanted to be beside the sea, I wanted to be close to where I could walk my dogs along the pier, various things like that. I ended up in Clock Jordan, it couldn't be further from the sea, it's right in the centre of Ireland. Uh, but the one thing that I hadn't um, ticked off on my checklist was community. And when I discovered the village here and what the project was about, but particularly the people that were involved in the project, uh, I just became uh, really enthusiastic about it. Uh, my experience uh, has been in public houses, uh, pubs and hotels, um, and that's where my expertise lies. Uh, so uh, it was quite an easy uh, decision to make that I would build a hostel in this uh, wonderful village as it's growing and uh, uh, decided to do that. Uh, we set off then and got the planning permission and this is the hostel which is um, almost ready. It should be finished in uh, by the end of October. It has to be finished by the end of October because I have guests arriving on the 1st of November so I have to have a hostel by then. So the hostel itself is uh, 10 rooms, 10 ensuite rooms. They're, uh, uh, it'll be up to a high standard and what we intend to do is, uh, again because it's the middle of Ireland, people, tourists aren't really interested in coming to the middle of Ireland. So what I have to do is I have to attract people here. And the way I, I'm going to attract people here is by running courses. The hostel will have um, uh, accommodation for uh, people staying overnight but will also have accommodation for classrooms. VINE stands for Village Internet Network Engineering, V-I-N-E. So we, we sort of came up with the cool name first and then put the words to the end of it. But it does work and the VINE is a, is a good symbol as well in that we hope it will grow and little things will grow off of the VINE. So VINE is a company formed by four members of the village and we were formed to provide the telecoms infrastructure for the houses and the businesses within the village. So we have put fibre optic cable in all the ducting throughout the site and we've served every house that's habited at the moment with the service. So they have internet, broadband internet and an internet phone system. So in the short term our goal is just that every time a house gets occupied be ready to provide them with that service. Um, and so far we've been able to do that and the 10 customers or so that we have are, are, are happy and their service is working and they're able to make cheap calls and surf the net happily. Okay. Um, in the future, we'd like to investigate providing maybe the television signals as well on the fibre and do work like shared services and connected computing and things like that. This is a project of two families. Um, two families uh, building two houses together. At the moment there's no real differentiation. There are fairly different families and fairly different expectations about what they want the inside of the house to be and how to live, but we've managed to build it into one kind of development and one structure and one kind of uh, building system. It's uh, predominantly self-built. Uh, we have hired a few people here and there and we've got we've. Uh, had a few contractors on site doing specific tasks, but for the most part it's myself and Pat, who's the other, other house owner. Uh, we're doing all the work and, uh, as a team. And so I'm an architect and I have a little bit of construction experience and 
Pat is a general all-purpose kind of guy, a, a former farmer, and he has loads of equipment. And we seem to have the skills that are uh, uh, compatible or uh, complementary so that we can actually get most of the work done. Most of the process, there's been a couple of different stages. We built the footings, and then we built the flat platform, and then we built all the frame. Um, we put the roof on to keep the rain out and then we started working on the exterior skin. We've got most of the exterior skin done. We still have some work to do on windows. Um, some of the windows are in, but other windows need to be go in. And there's a lot of copper sills and a lot of copper. We decided to go for a little bit of bling, a little bit of um, integrity, and, and it made it a lot easier to use copper, a little bit more expensive and more time consuming. Hopefully only two to three months before moving into a relatively incomplete house. Well, this is our cob cottage, and these are my new copper windowsills that I copied from Bruce's house <laughs> that, I, um, that I'm really proud of. It dries really, really hard. It's, um, it's as hard as concrete there, but if it gets very wet, it, it kind of gets eroded by the rain. So we will, once the walls are up, we'll put on a lime plaster um, onto this, and that will protect it. The materials are free, so just subsoil um, and straw, which is very cheap. Um, and another one is that it's really friendly to novice builders because anything that doesn't go right, you know, you haven't you haven't cut some timber to the wrong size or wasted some bricks, you know, it's it was free in the first place, so it's only your time that's expensive. It's also really sculptable, um, which is what attracted us to it because you can sculpt it into any shape you want as you go along, which is beautiful. In our house, the the house stays warm even if you open the door because the it's the walls that are warm. So it should be a really tasty warm house. <laughs> it's, the, it's actually the first house which has been built in this way. Um, it's using hemp and lime, uh, which was a system uh, very well developed by, by the French in France uh, and then in England. Um, and then a man called Marcus McCabe uh, has been developing his own version of it in Ireland which is different from anything else in that it uses the whole of the hemp. So it's Irish grown hemp, Irish lime uh, mixed together in a certain way and the, 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 the walls of the house, both the external walls and the internal walls, are built of hemp lime. Well like they can like the pollen from the flowers and they fly and turn them back into nectar. Then into honey and it's kind of... It's like that. Well, we have um, fed the bees three days ago uh, um, with a sugar syrup, which we were advised to do by um, uh, the person I got our nucleus highs from and we were coming back to check today. We're doing everything right so uh, we can only assume that they're just not very hungry. <laughs> we're gonna check them in, in, in maybe two more days and see. Um, but the, the bees are flying, we see them carrying in pollen which is all correct and you know they're all around at the, at the, at the entrance mm -hmm. or at the yeah. hole where, where the food is. Um, five weeks ago we, we, we got our three nucleus highs from um, South Tipperary and then about four weeks ago, we moved them into these hives here. So they're, you know, they're small colonies, about 10,000 bees in each. Um, so our, our purpose really is to get them established and get them strong to get through the winter. And we, we don't intend to, to harvest any honey until the end of next summer.